Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do an unboxing or an unenveloping for the Robinhood cash management debit account. I've been waiting months for this thing. And we're going to first take a look at the card and then I'll do a full card review, tell you the specific things you need to know about this cash management account, and then kind of like do some numbers of exactly how good is it. The Robinhood card comes in a first class envelope and I was pretty surprised because I, I, I planned on making this un, unboxing video but as soon as I opened it the card was just in this simple container. There's no like envelope in the envelope containing the user agreements or maybe advertisements. Robinhood's whole deal is just to basically simplify things, to make things less intimidating, more accessible. And I, I feel like, you know, since Apple, you know, cre started creating all these fun unboxings, you know, for the iPhone and, and, and the laptop, that Robinhood has also made a product with this, uh, this, this cartridge that kind of gives you an experience. So watch what happens when I pull on this tab. The debit card slides out on the other side. It's, it's pretty cool. And it says over here, democratizing America's financial system. That's kind of their motto. And once again, you know, they, they want accessibility. You think about 10 years ago, what it took to buy and sell stocks. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as easy as it is today where people, anyone can get on a smartphone and they can, uh, they can just buy and sell one share of one company if that's all they want to do. 10 years ago, that just wasn't possible. So it tells you to activate your card in the app and it slides in, slides out. I, I just feel this just reminds me of Apple so much how you want to keep the box. Like you just think the box is so clever and cool. You don't even want to throw it away. And here's the debit card. Let's get some uh, close up shots. There are four different color designs that you can choose from. And I decided to just go with the classic green. I, I, I really like the green color, you know, green for money, green for positive growth. I was tempted by the American flag design. And you'll notice it is, it is MasterCard. And you can see kind of like the feather logo in the bottom right. Uh, here's the security chip. I've already put some uh, duct tape on my information, but it'll show you your account number and then your name and expiration date and the uh, CCV. And this, this card is, feels really nice. There's no texture difference between the two colors. So obviously you can see my fingers, half the card is transparent, which is a lot of fun. And I, I got the scale out because I want to show you uh, how light this card is. Uh, just holding it, it feels very thin, very light. It's, it's super, super bendable. So we kind of have this uh, sliding scale of heaviness amongst the Amex charge cards. So you have, you know, the platinum is coming in at 18 grams. The gold comes in at uh, 15 grams. And then you have the green, which is on recycled plastic, only five grams. And the Robinhood debit card, it, it's the same weight, I feel like, as the Amex green, but for some reason it just, it feels lighter. And it could be kind of like a, a trick of the mind because half the card is clear. Maybe it feels like it's missing, but it, it just feels super light. I think that's what Robinhood was going for. You think of the feather, the arrow, just being light and quick and all that. I also have my Charles Schwab debit card. They went the opposite direction. So the Charles Schwab uh, debit card is six grams. They wanted to make it look like metal. This looks metal, but it's it's really lightweight plastic. So I think that's funny that all three of these cards are basically the same weight. And the Charles Schwab debit card wanted to look heavier and the, uh, the Robin Hood debit card wanted to look lighter. Pretty cool. All right, now that we've seen the card, I just kind of want to give you a time scale of how long it took me to get this card. I signed up for the card on October 15th and I was actually kind of late. They had announced it maybe two or three weeks prior. So I was 178,000th in line out of uh, 400,000 at the time. And by February 12th, I had tapped my way to number one or had jumped, uh, you know, they, they had been issuing maybe chunks of two or 3,000 cards at a time. But I was finally taken off the list on February 12th. I received my card on February 21st. And at this point, there was 
almost 1.2 million people waiting in line. So if you're waiting in line, I hope you get your card uh, later this year. Hopefully they can fix whatever distribution problems they're having at the moment and they can start issuing more than two or 3,000 cards a day. That rate is way too slow. Anybody who wants this account should really have it by now. Once your account is activated, uh, if you had selected a different card prior, they do give you the option of switching it. There are the four designs of the uh, classic green, black, white, and then the American flag. Once again, I was, I was tempted by the American flag, but I did decide to go with the green. And w once you're off the list, it says, congrats, there's like a little confetti drop. Uh, so let's start talking about this card. And the first thing you need to know is that it's not a checking or savings account. It's a cash management account. It's kind of its own thing. But it does act like a checking or savings account. Uh, you can do direct deposit. You do have a checking and routing number that you can set up with your employer. So it, it can be viewed sort of as a checking and savings account, but Robinhood makes it very clear that that is not what it is by definition. And this account is great because there are no monthly maintenance fees like certain banks have for their checking or savings accounts. There's no minimums. You can create the account and then never put money in it if you want. There's no foreign transaction fees. Uh, however, because it's a MasterCard, I have heard that there's a 1% MasterCard is charging a 1% conversion fee if you try and use this debit card abroad. I'm not 100% confident on that. This is once again a new product, so I don't think people have a lot of experience. If you know this for a fact, leave me a comment down below. I, I would love to know, you know, firsthand experience from somebody who has, who has been assessed this fee. This card has no overdraft fees, so if you don't have any money in your account and then you try and pull money out or spend with the card, it'll just be declined. You won't actually be assessed a fee on overdrafts. Unless you have Robinhood Gold, in that case, your account actually can go negative and then you start paying interest on whatever your negative balance is. Additionally, it's a debit card, so it doesn't earn any cash back or rewards. For that reason, I don't see myself day to day ever using the, the physical card because I would much rather use a credit card that earns cash back or rewards. So I got this just for the uh, interest you earn on the cash management account. Something that might concern people about Robinhood is they don't have any physical branch locations, but they do have a partner network now of over 75,000 ATMs that will not assess a fee for pulling money out. If you go to an ATM that is not part of this network, then normal ATM fees will apply. There is a daily spend limit on this debit card of $5,000 and a daily withdrawal limit of 510. That monthly amount is 15,000 and the uh, withdrawal monthly limit is 2,500. I don't know if you would have trouble hitting those limits uh, potentially and then you might just need to have several accounts that you use if you're a really big spender. It's actually really easy in the app to find fee-free ATMs. You just click on it and then it basically sends you to Google Maps and it'll show you where the closest ATMs are. Within three miles of where I live in Minot, North Dakota, I found 13 ATMs that I can go to to not have to pay any fees. So if I in a small town in North Dakota can find uh, plenty of ATMs, you can too. Now, the big draw of this account is the high interest you earn. There are a lot of these online banks that are offering these uh, high interest savings accounts. That is the market that Robinhood is trying to currently move into. The APY is currently 1.8%, but that's always subject to change. The Federal Reserve interest rates on you know 10-year treasury notes is kind of what sets the interest rate that they can offer people. So if feds raise interest rates, then potentially the interest rate on this uh, savings account or cash management account will go up in the future. Additionally, you're only earning that 1.8% on uninvested settled cash. If you're currently invested in stocks or bonds, obviously that doesn't count. And when you sell those stocks and bonds, it sometimes takes a couple days for it to officially settle in your account. So you won't be earning 1.8% until it's officially uh, settled. You do earn interest daily. That 1.8% is for the entire year. And uh, there, is, there is a percentage that you're getting daily. We'll talk about that in a sec. But the interest is only paid out actually monthly. If you go into the app, it'll just show you uh, at the bottom interest earned so far this month. 
Now that 14 cents that I've earned, I, I deposited $1,000 as soon as I got the account. And in, in you know a couple days, uh, I've earned 14 cents, but that's not gonna be paid out to me until February 28th, which is the end of the month. Other things you need to know is that this account is FDIC insured up to $250,000. Robinhood itself doesn't have this capability, but it has partnered with other banks, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Bank of Baroda, and US Bank in order to offer you up to $250,000 worth of FDIC insurance. The other great things about this card is it gives you zero liability protection, fraud monitoring, location protection, a freeze card feature and spend alerts. So there's a function of this card where if you're not spending in a location near your phone, uh, it just assumes that the card has been stolen and it'll actually auto decline it. Now, if your phone dies or is shut off or for whatever reason you forget to bring your phone, this could be a problem. But in 99% of cases, this is actually a huge benefit that could potentially you know, save you a bad day. In the app, there's also a button you can press in order to freeze your card so you just can't spend with it uh, while it's been frozen from your phone. Now, the question is, you know, how much do I make from this cash management account? And as a test, I just put $1,000 on Robinhood. I, I personally use Vanguard and Schwab, but potentially I could, I could start using Robinhood in the future. And the formula to figure out how much interest are you earning per day is one plus the APY, which is 1.8%, uh, to the uh, N, which would be one divided by 365 days. This is actually a leap year, so it should be 366, but we're gonna say three, 365. You then subtract one, and that gives your, your daily percent earning rates, which is uh, point, mm, which would only be 0.489%. Go ahead and multiply that by your current daily account balance, $1,000. And I'm only earning 4.89 cents a day. Multiply that by 365, and my accounts would earn about $17.84. Now, yes, I would be earning interest, which would be paid out once a month. I then would be making money on the interest I've already earned, but for simplicity's sake, Let's just go ahead and say $17.84. But what if you were to max out your Robinhood cash management account and have the full uh, FDIC insured rate of $250,000? How much would you be making then? It's the same daily percentage rate, except multiply it by a quarter million dollars. You would be earning an interest $12.23 a day. Multiply that by 365, you would be earning uh, $4,462.13. Yes, $4,000 is a lot of money, but on a $250,000 investment, that's actually pretty poor. There's a lot better ways to uh, spend a quarter million dollars or invest, don't spend it, invest a quarter million dollars. Uh, but the point of this cash management account is basically just to keep up with inflation. Inflation every year is usually between one and 3%. So by having your uninvested funds sitting in this account, you're basically keeping pace with inflation. Your money year to year is not losing money just by being money. So in that respect, I think Robinhood is fantastic. I love the simplicity of their platform and their design. I love everything they do. I just, I just don't, I just personally don't know if I like the accessibility, it's almost too accessible uh, for my money. I don't wanna be on my phone all day checking my bank account or trying to day trade, swing trade. I, I personally am not using Robinhood that much because it's, it's just too kind of like gamified and addicting. For that reason, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'll actually be using this cash management account. I might stick with American Express, but we'll see. It's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a good product. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, uh, give me a comment down below. What are your thoughts on Robinhood's cash management account? Which card design are you gonna get? What number in the, uh, the waiting queue are you? I think that's really interesting to know. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. I talk about military and finance issues, but I'll cover anything that interests me that is you know, tech or finance related. And until the next video, take care.